My Lords, it's always a great pleasure to follow the noble Lord, Lord Young of Norwood Green, who speaks a great deal of common sense on these issues. Uh, my Lords, I declare my interests uh, in energy as listed in the register. They're mainly in coal, which is threatened by shale gas, so I should really be against it, but I'm not. Uh, I first visited a, a shale gas well in Pennsylvania in 2011 uh, when I was writing a report for a think tank, the uh, Global Warming Policy Foundation, founded by my noble friend Lord Lawson. And at that time, most energy analysts were still arguing that shale gas was a flat in the pan. I concluded that this was almost certainly wrong and that we were witnessing an energy revolution of huge significance. And so it proved. America went from importing to exporting gas. The shale boom pumped hundreds of billions of dollars into the American economy through domestic production and lower prices. The environmental problems were minimal. President Obama's energy secretary confirmed this in 2015 when he said, quotes, I've still not seen any evidence of fracking per se contaminating groundwater. Over the past decade, America cut its carbon dioxide emissions faster than any other country, thanks almost entirely to the shale gas revolution. And it did so while simultaneously bringing heavy industry back on shore, whereas we've driven it away. Saudi Arabia tried to kill the shale drillers uh, business in 2014 by flooding the market and cutting prices. They failed. The technology keeps improving, and as the noble Lord Lord Young said, the, 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 the break-even, uh, my, my noble friend Lord McGregor said, the break-even price uh, gets lower and lower. I was on a shale oil site in Colorado last November watching the new quiet fracking fleet do their work, an operation that's about as short as building a wind turbine and as limited in area but produces hundreds of times more energy uh, and is about 2% as prominent in the landscape in terms of height uh, once it's finished. In 2011, I wrote, shale gas faces a formidable host of enemies in the coal, nuclear, renewable and environmental industries, all keen, it seems, to strangle it at birth, especially in Europe. I was right about that too. What was the reaction from the environmental movement to this gift from the gods to impose it with all to oppose it with all their might, even at the cost of telling the truth? Friends of the Earth was forced by the Advertising Standards Authority this year to withdraw several misleading claims it had made about shale gas. As the noble Lord Lord Young said, they even resorted to arguing that sand uh, is carcinogenic. They didn't quite have the brass neck to complain about dihydrogen monoxide, which is injected in large quantities uh, into shale gas wells. Uh, for those whose chemistry is rusty, that's H2O or water. Who is behind this anti-shale propaganda? Well, let's take a look at who stands to suffer from a successful shale revolution here. First, the subsidy-drunk renewable energy industry, still trying to justify things like burning American forests for electricity. The former DEC chief scientist, the late Professor David Mackay, found that in particular circumstances using wood pellets to generate electricity could have the carbon footprint almost twice that of coal and four times that of gas. Yet we subsidise foreign wood pellets and stand in the way of shale gas. The second group with an interest in undermining British shale gas apparently is a foreign power. Anders Fogh Rasmussen, the former NATO Secretary General, has accused Moscow of campaigning to undermine shale gas. And here's a quote from National Review magazine in 2015. Russia has ramped up covert payments to environmental groups in the West by supporting well-intentioned environmentalists with hard cash, often without their knowledge. Russian intelligence gains Western mouthpieces to petition Western audiences in its favour. And sure enough, the Kremlin's mouthpiece, RT, Russia Today, has been broadcasting anti-UK shale propaganda on its Kaiser report, including the line that frackers are the moral equivalent of paedophiles. Oh the US Director of National Intelligence, the Federal National Intelligence Director in the United States, said very recently, RT runs anti-fracking programming, highlighting environmental issues and the impacts on public health. This is likely reflective of the Russian government's concern about the impact of fracking and US natural gas production on the global energy market and the potential challenges to Gazprom's profitability." End quote. This is what we are up against. The noble Lord Lord Truscott knows Russia well. Uh, in the light of what I've said, can he shed any light on which anti-fracking protesters in this country are funded directly or indirectly by Russian interests? 
We will, my lords, be burning gas for decades to come under any policy. Even the national grid's extreme gone green scenario for future energy policy sees us burning almost as much gas in 2035 as we burn today. But more than that, we have a huge chemical industry in this country, employing hundreds of thousands of people directly and indirectly, and it needs <coughs> methane and ethane derived from natural gas wells as feedstock. That industry will disappear rapidly if we do not exploit domestic shale. It has repeatedly warned us of this. As the GMB union puts it, if exploratory drilling reveals a plentiful supply of UK shale gas reserves, is it not a moral duty for Britain to take responsibility for providing for our own gas needs from these supplies rather than importing gas from elsewhere? End quote. Beneath Lancashire and Yorkshire, my lords, in the Boland Shale lies one of the richest shale gas resources ever discovered. And as the noble Lord Lord Young said, just 10% of it will be enough to provide 50 years of British needs. We know how to get it out, using sand and water to make millimetre-wide cracks a mile and a half down, with minimal environmental risks. The tiny group of middle-class southerners who go north to protest about this stuff are not representative of public opinion. So let us not give in to the 20th century Luddites, commercial interests or foreign crony capitalists who do not have our interests at heart.